everybody. What I wanted to talk to you about for this first video is why we don't get the results at home that we get in a professional kitchen. Because I've seen a lot of friends of mine doing things at home and they just really never quite get it. So first kind of basic stuff we have in a professional kitchen is fire and lots of very hot flames. So that's the first thing that we're working with, like lots of heat. And an oven that's like at, uh, you know, 220, 250 even. So you're talking about a lot of fire that we're using in a professional kitchen. So don't be afraid of the heat at home. And we're going to show you how to do that at home. Second thing is we almost always use these pans. So this one's been used a little bit. This is the classic size we use in a restaurant. But in a restaurant, of course, we're doing like one or two portions at a time of each individual thing. So this for home is for like two people, okay? I've got some other ones. This is a sort of medium size and this is a larger size. Now the thing about this, the first thing about these pans is it goes from the heat into the oven. So bang, bang. And at home, these two fit in my oven. I haven't tried this one yet. We're going to see that in a minute. So if they fit in the oven, then we're good to go. But this is enough for four portions of a lot of things. Or even get a couple of these and get them going and work from this. I cook two pieces of fillet of, uh, you know, fillet of fish on this pan. So it doesn't stick and it keeps the heat. And the whole thing that you're doing here is keeping your heat because as soon as you let something start to cool down, it starts to lose the liquid inside. So if you say you're cooking scallops and you go, you get it hot right here, as soon as you sit it on the side, it starts releasing all those juices, which is not what you want in so many preparations. So what you want to do is go hot, hot, serve. So keep it hot and keep it moving. So I'm going to show you that at home. A couple of pieces of equipment that are useful. Timer. Because what you want to do, you want to have a certain amount of concentration when you're cooking. You want to be able to, you know, put your energy into what you're doing. And so for myself, I don't like to tie up my brain with, you know, what I've got in the oven. So it's just so easy to just bang it on a timer. Like if I do scallops, scallops here, one, uh, you know, brown it on one side, turn it over, throw it in the oven, two minutes, bang. It's perfect. I use it in the restaurant. A lot of my guys don't use it, but... Okay, so one of the second principles I want to talk to you about what we do in a professional kitchen, which a lot of people don't get at home, is don't touch anything too much. Stop touching the food. If you look in a professional kitchen when we're doing this with our food, why are we doing that? Because once you start going in there and playing with it, you're, you're breaking it up too much, you're messing with it too much. So the main, one of the main principles here of really good cooking is minimal manipulation of the stuff. So get yourself some rock salt and learn how to do this. It's really easy and it keeps your stuff very nice. Get some seeds. We're going to toast some seeds and some nuts later in these nice pans and these kind of things, you know, for moving things around a little bit. Now, when you work with these pans, the reason why they don't sell these things, I think, in uh, cook shops and stuff like that is because you've got to get used to working like this. You can't you know, you throw this guy in the oven, it's going to be burning hot because that's why you can throw that handle in the oven. So you've got to get used to having an apron, having a kitchen towel going with everything, okay? You're always touching. In a professional kitchen, you never touch anything without a towel in your hand because you never know what's going to just come out of the oven or what's going to just have come from here or come from there. This is also a nice little piece of equipment. It's a, you know, like a scraper, but it's with the red handle, it's good for heat. So... You can scrape around like this and lift things up nice and easily. And what else you got? Good chef's knife, of course. This one's been around the block. <laughs> Still good. Uh, my guy like this one. It's good for meat, slicing meat and stuff like that. This, they always show chefs with this. I personally don't use it so much, but it is good for moving things around. Okay, we've got a nice big box of vegetables today. So here in London, it's July. And July, what we've got is color, color, colorful peppers, colorful courgette. Whoop. Little baby green courgette, yellow courgette, this stripy business. I'm not sure what they're going to be like inside, but we're going to check it out. And these kind of pale green ones, which have a different texture inside. So we're going to work with these different vegetables. 
Also, what I noticed with the non-professional cooks is they often get the meat right. You know, you can go online and see a million videos about how to cook a steak, how to cook a chicken, blah, blah, blah. But no, most people screw up the veg. They overcook. They don't know how to, to get it out. They don't, they think that you can take a, like a stew, say you're making a Thai curry or something like that, and you're just going to throw this vegetable and that vegetable in. It doesn't work like that. If you want to get it nice and you want all your vegetables to maintain their, their particular quality of uh, texture. So if you want a stew or a curry or something like that that's going to have certain textures, you know, different textures inside, basically you can't cook it all together unless you really time it and you know how to make you make your one curry all the time. Anyway, nice little late spring turnips from France and corn and some of this. You know, it's not the season for root vegetables, like this is like winter stuff, but still you can get this all year round. And I wanted to show you a couple of nice little things because the other thing that I really want you to think about is infusion, infusing, how to infuse things with flavor. So I want to do a nice little gratin with you later where you take some root vegetables and you cook it with cream and mushroom or just potato and mushroom. Like we're still getting some nice wild mushrooms right now. So you do a nice saute of mushrooms, you flavor them up with a bit of a shallot, a bit of garlic, and then you layer them with potatoes and you bake it in cream like a gratin dauphinoise. Gratin in France, you don't really cook with cheese. So we're just talking about pure flavors of mushroom and potato and cream and thyme, a bit of garlic and stuff like that. So this is uh, like one of the main principles that I want you to think about is like how to get flavors in flavors. I use very, very little garlic and onion in the kitchen. I personally think it's a kind of an aggressive element. Of course, it's good for, for some things like uh, wild mushrooms with shallot and a bit of garlic. But, you know, like at Ducasse, we always used to just uh, crush some garlic in oil and then just use the oil to season. Like in some things, like a gratin dauphinoise, obviously you want a little bit more garlic, but uh, I hardly put it anywhere. You know, I'm really into pure flavors. I wouldn't put it with any of these vegetables, maybe maybe that, but that's it. You know, here you have some leek. Leek is a nice substitute for onion because it's a milder, it's got more of a personality rather than just like onion. Jerusalem artichoke is an amazing little veg because it gives you this smokiness. And another thing I want to tell you, talking about infusions, we've got this idea of cooking fish and things like this in paper, in uh, parchment paper. And this gives you like closing all your elements in something, cooking it for not a long time. So you need things that are really going to bring your flavor up fast. So a bit of lemon zest, a bit of Jerusalem artichoke gives you that smokiness and a little bit, some herbs and things like that will just infuse this really beautifully inside. So that's what we're looking for in these videos is to teach you some just basic, they're not basic principles, they're kind of principles that people miss all the time, you know, about not touching food, even guys in the kitchen. It's hard to teach them how to not touch things too much. Any non-professional coming into the kitchen is the first thing I see, they're like touching. Really nice uh, aubergine you got there. It's not the season for this, this is coming from Peru, but it's fun, it's good stuff, and it's good flavor and mixes with things. So we're going to cook this stuff at home today. See you later.